A crucial stretch on the road for the Mets begins and not in good fashion and a Yankees career begins for a veteran slugger in the Bronx. Hey everybody welcome to Geico Sports Night. I'm Jonas Schwartz and I'm Chris Williamson plus all the local NHL teams we're hoping to land this guy but it's the Rangers who come away with a big time defenseman but how much would it cost them the answer later in the show but we start things off though in Atlanta where the Mets began their series versus the Braves. All right, so Atlanta currently holding the top spot in the NL East. Zach Wheeler enters having allowed 10 home runs in his previous six starts. Bottom first, first batter he sees. Ronald Acuna lifts the ball to left. It's gone. Lead off home run. One nothing Braves. Top fifth. Same score. One on. Wheeler bloops it up the middle of Mike Soroka. Ahmed Rosario scores. We're tied at two. Bottom fifth. Still tied. Atlanta threatening with two on. Nick Markakis loops it to left. Jeff McNeil's throw is cut off. Both runners score. 4-2 Braves. Wheeler goes six innings with 10 hits, four earned runs, and four strikeouts. Top six. Mets down 5-2. Robinson Cano crushes it to right center. We'd like to see more of that, buddy. Solo shot. Cano's fourth of the year. Mets trail 5-3. Bottom seven. Bases loaded. Drew Gagne replacing Jerry's Familia. Ozzy Albies hits it hard to right. Marquez scores. Austin Riley beats the throw home. Mets give up four runs in the inning. They go on to lose 12-3. Mickey Callaway, not really happy. We just stunk. Um, again, uh, we weren't good. Uh, we got to recalibrate what we're doing, and and we we have to do the job better. I mean, that's just plain and simple. Are you concerned by Familia's trajectory as of late? Yeah, I mean, it's concerning, obviously, when, when guys are struggling to, to that degree. But it's not just him, obviously. It's... Um, you know, almost the whole bullpen at this point. So, um, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to get it done. Um, what we've been doing obviously hasn't worked, so we're going to have to change some stuff up, just like we always will when, when we're not getting the re results we want and uh, get back to the drawing board and, and figure this thing out. Time now for Baseball Night in New York. I'm joined by Mark Melusa, Sal Licata, John Harper. Underwhelming pitching, uh, starting pitching, defense, and relief work are the lowlights in this game for the Mets. Harp, was this as bad a start to a crucial road trip as you could get? Yeah, it was an embarrassing performance all the way around, and it feels like, it really does feel like the walls are closing in on this team starting out this trip. You know, I mean, to me, I've been touting Wheeler for, for a long time now, and he was bad again to me. I know the defense hurt him in big spots. Ramos hurt him behind the plate. But you still can't make those mistake pitches he's making. And, and you know, then the defense. And, yeah, and finally, the bullpen is just a, a complete mess. And that's why this, you look at this team and say, I don't think they have a chance now to turn this around, mainly because of the bullpen. Yeah, I mean, defense, starting pitching, bullpen. I mean, uh, pick your poison. You have an Atlanta Bra Brave team that is hot as a firecracker, and you go in uh, to it. Atlanta and you get absolutely run out of the building. I mean, that's that's a problem when you have the importance of this stretch. It's 11 straight games. It's 11 games on the road. We know how bad they've been on the road this season and the quality of opponent that they are facing. And you see, I like to see a little bit more of a competitive effort. And as Harp mentioned, I mean, right now, the, the issue you have is even if Wheeler was good, you know he's not throwing a complete game. So at right. some point in time, you're going to see that bullpen and you have little to no confidence the bullpen can get anybody out at this stage. And that's all of them. You know, and also the offense isn't good enough to where you don't have to worry about a tight game late. I mean, when was the last time you could sit there and say, well, who cares who comes in and gets the final six outs of the game because the Mets just took a five-run lead or six-run? They don't pad the offense either, so it's everything. Yeah, the bullpen's been atrocious. There's not a guy out there I trust. That includes Seth Lugo, who's been okay, but he's got restrictions as well. Can't pitch him back-to-back days. So even the good guys out there, they have restrictions and limitations. Starters are way too inconsistent. Lineup isn't very good. Defense, they got an infielder playing the outfield. They got a catcher who the number one priority to me this offseason was to get a defensive catcher yeah. for once with the team who was built on the starting rotation and really I mean that's the strength of their team up the middle they don't address it in center field and they get a catcher and who's not a good defensive catcher you're seeing all the ramifications of that now. all right Harp you spoke to this Moose are you at the point where you think Zach Wheeler will always have good stuff but never truly put it together uh, for a whole season, probably. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, listen, I've been disappointed in Wheeler. I thought Wheeler turned a corner last year in the second half. I thought going into a contract year, especially look at the deal that Corbin got last offseason from from Washington, six for a buck forty. Um, you know, I, I thought Wheeler was going to put it all together this year and be absolutely dominant, and he hasn't been. Um, and when you, this is the time where you need your ace or one of your guys that you look at the top of the rotation starter. I know he's not an ace. He's not the Mets ace. Degrom is, but when the ace 
like pitcher. You need him to give you a representable start, and he didn't do it down in Atlanta. All right, let's get to the bullpen because we have to. Uh, <laughs> Jerry's Familia. Sal, what on earth do you do with Familia and everybody else in this bullpen? Well, I mean, let's just focus on Familia because he can't keep being brought out there. I mean, it's just I don't care what the other options are. The number one option is he cannot set foot on the major league mound. So I would talk to him and be like, look, you don't have it. It's I don't know what's going on. you got to go down to the minor leagues here and figure this thing out, gain some confidence back. If he doesn't want to do that, and I understand they're yeah, not going to. got control of that. Yeah, I, so if he doesn't want to do that, that's fine. Then if I'm the organization, I actually care about winning, I move on. I mean, I know the money's spent. It's gone. What are you going to do? There's no hope for Familia. You can't throw well, a I, I can't go that far because, you know, relievers, you just never know when they're going to turn around. He's got two yeah. more years. But I would certainly put him at the very bottom of the barrel in the bullpen, use him the way you're using Gagno or somebody like that, only when they're way behind. And it's not, and just, you know, give him some time. But there's nothing, nothing else. You can't even – tonight, this was a 5-3 game when he came in. It's not a high-leverage situation, but it's still a ball game. And he, there it goes. It's completely lost. All right, we've got to leave it there. Yeah. Uh, we're out of time, but we will be back to talk yet. Yankees. Speaking of which, how did they play uh, on Monday evening? Here's Chris with the highlights. Thanks, Jonas. Yankees and the Rays playing at the stadium. Edwin Encarnacion making his Yankee debut. The AL home run leader getting the nod as a DH. The fans welcoming him to the Bronx. But in his first at bat, he goes down swinging at the two-seam fastball. He finished tonight 0 for 4. Bottom of the third, runner on second for DJ LeMayu. He drills it to deep left center. His eighth long ball of the season gives the Yanks a 2 to nothing lead. Now, Masahiro Tanaka starting for the Bombers, and he was fantastic in this one. Right here, strikes out G-Man Choi for the final out of the seventh. Then the eighth, strikes out Joey Wendell swinging. Tanaka back out for the ninth, and he gets Tommy Pham to ground out to end it. A complete game, two-hit shutout for Tanaka. Ten strikeouts, only one walk. Yanks win it 3-0. Here's Sweeney Murdy with more on Tanaka's brilliant performance. Hey, what's that quote from The Dark Knight? You know, one about the hero you need, hero you deserve, something like that. I don't know, I'm usually pretty good with movie quotes, but I get that one mixed up all the time. Masahiro Tanaka is the hero the Yankees need and deserve in all of that right now. A complete game two hitter, game one of a big three game series against Tampa Bay. Tell me you don't want this guy on the mound in a big game. Look at his past performances in the playoffs or any time during the regular season where you consider a big time matchup, the crowd is energized, all that stuff, Tanaka comes to perform. He's been that way since the Yankees have gotten him. And sure, his regular season numbers don't sparkle like the quote-unquote ace. But when you need a big performance, Tanaka delivers it. I will take my chances with him every single time. I'm not saying the Yankees don't need to go out and get another pitcher, get a number one type guy, but what good does it do to win game one of a playoff series if you lose games two, three, and four? Tanaka is a guy you want on the mound in October. James Paxton could be that too. We'll see if he's turned a corner. But the Yankees, as they look for pitching, remember, I said this before, no matter who they get, it doesn't mean the other guys can just sit back. They need more performances like this. Tanaka showed what a big game pitcher he is. Back to you. Thanks, Sweeney. We know that John Carlos Stanton is expected back in the lineup on Tuesday, but what about Aaron Judge? We'll fill you in coming up on Geico Sports Night. And we begin our countdown to 62,000 to one. Three teams, one city, one year. As SNY looks back to 1969, the most magical year in New York sports history. Check it out. Three teams, three professional teams in the same town winning a championship in the same year. Has that ever been done anywhere besides New York City? No. Game five of the championship series may have been the most important game in the history of the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks seeking their first NBA championship. I tell everybody, my kid was the greatest of all of them. for the world champion. I believe in destiny, but this one night, everything fell in place for us. We have a new NBA champion. There are more underdogs out there in this world than there are favorites, you see. The game is over. The New York Jets are the world champions. Look at this scene. In New York, there are always a lot of stars. There are a few champions. Geico Sports Night is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com for a free rate quote. Uh-oh. Looks like someone's still nervous about buying a new house. 
Is it that obvious? Yes, it is. You know, maybe you'd worry less if you got Geico to help with your homeowner's insurance. I didn't know Geico helps with homeowner's insurance. Yeah, they've been doing it for years. What are you doing? Big Steve? Thanks, man. There he is. Get to know Geico and see how much you could save on homeowners and renters insurance. From the start, the C-Class was ahead of its time. Still, we never stopped making it stronger, faster, smarter. Because to be the best is to never, ever stop making it better. The 2019 C-Class family. Lease the C300 sedan for just $4.19 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Hey, Google, talk to City Entertainment. Welcome back to City Entertainment. Let's help you find a concert. Tom Joyner Morning. La Loca for your work day. D.L. Hughley Afternoons. New York's best mix of bar and b all the time. On air, online, on demand. Radio 103.9. I'm here with the Cortezes, Lawson, Carnivales at their family reunion to show them the family of Chevy SUVs. There's the Trax, the Equinox, and the Traverse. Which one's your favorite? The Trax, actually. More compact. Equinox is jumping out at me. If I wanted to be a cool dad, the Traverse. I like the blue one. The red one. And I would take that Traverse. Luckily, no matter what you want in an SUV, Chevy has the perfect one for you. I think you got it covered. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Equinox for around $179 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Tomorrow, Pete Alonso aims to display some impressive exit velocity against division foes as he and the Mets look to gain some ground on Freddie Freeman and the Braves. Coverage begins with City Pregame tomorrow at 6.30, only at SNY. A little chopper to third. LeMay who feels fires. Got the Yankees win. If it's not the best, and it's right up there with one or two others. That's how great Tanaka was tonight. All right, welcome back. We are back with Moose, Sal, and Harp. And Tanaka, I mean, comes through again in another big game situation. A complete game shutout. Uh, Moose, outside of Justin Verlander, is Tanaka the best big game pitcher in the American League? Well, he's the best big game pitcher for the Yankees, uh, and he's right there with anybody. I mean, listen, I, we could all talk about his inconsistencies in the regular season as being a performer and, you know, not winning 20 games, not being this dynamic guy. But when you need a big win and you need a big start, Masotiero Tanaka is one of the better Yankees we've seen in quite some time because he is a tremendous big game pitcher. He talked about the fact that when he had an option to opt out, he decided to stick around because he wants the ball in the big game in New York City. He understands that's what proved. I understand this is June. I know it's not October, but is there a guy right now? I don't care anybody. I don't care who. He's as good of a big game pitcher as the Yankees have had in quite some time. And you saw it once again on Monday night. Hey, he's proven it. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about if the Yankees are looking for that game one starter. Maybe he is the game one starter when he gets to October. Maybe he should be because he has proven he can do it. When his breaking stuff is sharp, like it was tonight, man, he can just shut down any lineup. The problem is you never know when those clunkers are coming because the clunker, clunkers are coming over the course of the season. So far, for the most part, though, he has been nails in October, and that's what this team is all about. And when the clunkers do come, it's usually via the long ball, which takes the Yankees out of the game. Right, right. right, but yeah, as far as being a, a big game pitcher, you look at the American League, you named it, Jonas, Justin Verlander. I mean, what, what are you going to go, Nate Valdi? you putting in there? I mean, who else is going well, to go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? maybe, but, yeah, but you know, even he hasn't been great. 
big, big game, right? Yeah. I mean, Corey Kluber's gotten right. tattooed right. in a big spot. Right. All these guys have gotten beat. So right. everybody think it was National League. Actually, yeah, right. Big game pitcher, right? Right, but in the American League, you'd you'd say you take Tanaka up against anybody on his, when he's on his best, and usually that's the case with the big game. I put up a, put him up against anybody in the American. League. Harp, was there a better offseason signing than the Yankees and DJ LeMay? It's starting to look like he is the best. I'll tell you, and, and you know, and I questioned. I think we all did. Where is he going to fit in exactly? If everybody's healthy, you weren't sure where he was going to play. They talked about moving everybody around, and of course there have been injuries. Now they're still back in that situation where he's going to looks like he's going to play a lot of third base, or Shella might be kind of the odd man out again. But uh, I know they're going to give DD some rest, so maybe it works out. But to me, he has been their MVP. I mean, the, the numbers with score and runners score versus the clutch numbers are off the charts. I think you can make a case that he is, should be in the running for an American League MVP because he's meant that much to this team. There's no question about that. Let's talk about the latest acquisition here, Moose. Yeah. The Incarnacion, 0 for 4 strikeout in his Yankee debut. Obviously, we know he will hit here. But, you know, I mean, what do you make out of what he brings to this lineup in the sense of how he beefs it up? Uh, well, I mean, listen, the Yankees don't need power. I mean, especially with Stanton and Judge returning. What he does provide is a couple of things. Number one is he keeps them away from all the other competition. Number two is uh, he provides a little bit of insurance should another injury rear its ugly head. So you look at Stanton and Judge, all of a sudden now you have a little bit of depth. I understand he clogs the DH spot, but still now if you should suffer another significant injury, then all of a sudden your lineup is not as limited when you have a guy that you just brought in that was leading the, you know, leading the American League in home runs with 21. Yeah, I think their better lineup anyway was going to be with Stanton majority of time in left field. So you have Stanton. It's a little Stanton. shaky, though. I, no, I get that. But, defensively. But, yeah, right, but offensively. And look, late in games, maybe they're going to change that and put Gardner out in left field. That's going to be his value right now because Gardner's not really going to be cracked that lineup regularly. But with Urshela, who lost about 50 points on his average over the last few weeks, yeah. he's coming back down to earth. Yeah. Now, instead of forcing him at third, you could have LeMayhew there, void at first, and you have, obviously, Encarnacion at DH. So they're loaded. It is amazing how somebody comes back to earth, somebody picks things up. Yeah. Cameron Mabin, three home, you know, three home, uh, three games in a row, home runs. It's really yeah. incredible stuff. Just as our panel is, Harp, mm -hmm. Sal Moose, thanks so much. Coming up next, an update on Noah Syndergaard's injured hamstring. We'll hear from Thor about how he's feeling. Plus, a month into the job, John Davidson, old baby, makes his first big move as Rangers president. The details on the blue shirt's new blue liner. Straight ahead on Geico Sportsnet. is the time to move up. Move up to next-gen connectivity. Move up to advanced safety. Move up to something a little more, well, Cadillac in XT5, XT4, and the Escalade. Get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Cadillac XT5 from around $399 per month with no first month's payment and $29.40 due at signing. Get new floors during Empire Today's gigantic 75% off sale. That's carpet, laminate, and even hardwood 75% off. Empire makes getting beautiful new floors easy. See samples in your home, get a free estimate, and have your floors professionally installed. Update your floors with Empire and get 75% off carpet, laminate, and hardwood. Schedule now. 800-588-2300, Empire. Today. If you were to attend a party with all of history's most influential people, the creators, the innovators, the pioneers, you'd notice a common theme. But if you were to choose one mother or father to throw such a party, it would have to be the father of tequila. Cuervo Tradicional, since 1795, the father of tequila. This summer, find what you love in New York State. So much to discover, so much you'll remember. Plan your summer vacation at iloveny.com. Here's your Buick, sir. Actually, that's my Buick. How are we gonna fit in your mom's Buick? Easy. I like that new Buick. Me too. I was actually talking about that Buick. I knew that. Did you? Buick's fresh new lineup is full of surprises. 
Current eligible lessees get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Encore for around $139 per month. Or current eligible GM lessees lease this 2019 Enclave for around $349 per month. The storylines that have the New York sports culture buzzing through the lens of social media reaction. Let's get the conversation started. The Threat, presented by City. Weekdays at 5, only on SNY. Welcome back. John Davidson, Jeff Gordon not afraid to pull the trigger. The Rangers made a big splash Monday night, acquiring defenseman Jacob Truba from the Winnipeg Jets. Blue Shirts giving up Neil Pionk in a first-round pick, number 20 overall, in Friday's draft. They had gotten that pick, by the way, in a previous trade with the Jets that sent Kevin Hayes to Canada. Many teams wanted Truba, so this is a big pickup on the blue line for the Blue Shirts. Well, we've had a number of conversations over the last uh, few weeks uh, with Winnipeg about uh, some players and Jacob's name came up and uh, you know, obviously he's a player that, that we would covet and, and uh, I think most teams would and what he what he can do and provide for you which is a lot right he's a big he's a big defenseman he's 25 years old he can play against the best players he has offense he can kill Pally so um, he's in the prime of his career so uh, you know the opportunity for a player like that to become available it doesn't happen all the time and uh, you know we jumped on it Sal, I don't think there's any question about it. A bold move by Gordon and Davidson, and honestly, a great move, right? You trade Pionk, right, who's also a restricted free agent, a 20th overall pick, and you bring in a guy in Truba who at his size at 6'3", puck-moving defenseman. He averaged nearly 23 minutes of ice time for the Winnipeg Jets, one of the better teams in the Western Conference this past year, and a guy that was obviously a marathon man, prime of his career, 25 years of age, restricted free agent. I don't think they make this deal unless they believe they can sign him to a long-term deal. Yeah, and this is not Shattenkirk. They're getting this guy in the prime of his career. You mentioned the size, 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 depending on where you look. He's going to be a more physical defenseman and obviously going to be the quarterback of that power play. So not only are you going to use him offensively on the power play, but also defensively the moves with the penalty kill. So the special teams for him, 25 years of age in the prime of his career, his size, the Rangers desperately needed somebody like this. Not to mention they didn't give up anything for him because they were talking about giving up maybe Buchnevich. Rangers gave up uh, the 20th pick overall. That's basically it because you give right, up the 20th day. pick that they got from Winnipeg initially in the Kevin Hayes deal and Gordon talked about coming into this offseason accelerating this rebuild right I think a happy guy has got to be Henrik Lundqvist right yeah. now because you look at it this is building up to a team having the second overall pick right in Friday night's NHL draft Sal you can look at this Ranger team as taking a monumental step forward with a young head coach with a dynamic young team adding true on that defense on that back line to where maybe they're a playoff team next year Yeah, and a team who showed signs last year that they were more competitive than maybe they were supposed to be or maybe we thought they'd be obviously petered out a little bit this is a huge move though I would not be shocked Moose if they could compete for a playoff spot next. I know a lot of people are locked into Winnipeg Jet games <laughs> but still Troop is yeah. a hell of a defenseman back to you Chris yeah, I'll be checked in Moose definitely for sure all right Noah Syndergaard left Saturday's game with a hamstring issue and that put Mets fans in panic mode but Monday their fears were calm Mickey Calloway said the MRI on the right hand revealed a low grade hamstring for Thor who's on the I.O. now Syndergaard even participated in agility drills on Monday but after the game said he's not 100 percent I feel great you know uh, it's really encouraging just going out there and um, not having really any uh, limitations and uh I'm not feeling any pain, so uh, just uh, taking things day by day. Are you hopeful that you'll only miss one start with this? Uh, I am hopeful, yes, but uh, time will only tell. Right now, we're just gonna I'm gonna come to the ballpark every day and reevaluate and uh, go from there. And there's some more good news for the Mets pitching staff. Jason Vargas will make his scheduled start in the Cubs series. He left Sunday's game with a minor hamstring cramp, but nothing to be alarmed about. The team's pitching depth would have been hurting big time if he couldn't go. Now, Brandon Nimmo headed west for a second opinion on his neck injury. Nimmo in Los Angeles to visit Dr. Robert Watkins, who Mets fans will remember is the same doctor who examined David Wright when the captain was dealing with his spinal stenosis. There is no timeline right now for Nimmo's return. Back to the Yankees, where it wasn't the greatest debut for Edwin Encarnacion, but it doesn't really matter since the Bombers got the win. He went 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Aaron Boone knows he's got a special hitter, though, still in the lineup. Just missed a couple in his first at bat when when it finally got him on a strikeout, lines out to short. Um, he's a really good hitter, um, more than just obviously a great power hitter. And um, he, 
th- th- this guy's a, a pro in the box and knows what he's doing. And um, so it was good to s- get him in there. I saw a lot of pitches today, so I feel good. I just missing a couple of pitches that I know I can hit him good. But he's, he's part of the game, you know. And I get him tomorrow. All right, Josh McCown did great as a backup to Sam Darnold while the rookie learned the ropes of being in the NFL. But now McCown won't be backing up anybody in the NFL. The answer and what he's got going on next when Geico Sports Night returns. Geico Sports Night is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. There's a lot to smile about in every Volkswagen. Right now, you can lease a value-packed 2019 Atlas S4 Motion for $329 a month. Now with the People First Warranty. Set your eyes on my latest game changer, a world-famous Baba Pita Queen mattress for only $299. With all the quality and comfort of its more expensive cousins, it's really a little gem of a mattress. So that's what we called it, the Baba Pita Gem. Only at Bob's Discount Furniture and MyBob's.com. The Kangaroo's Pouch provides comfort and security for the little ones inside. Possibly the inspiration behind Hanes Comfort Flex Fit with a breathable pouch. That and probably this. Hanes Comfort Flex Fit. Our son Arjun was six weeks old and already had his first intestinal surgery when he was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. CF is a rare genetic life-shortening disease that affects every organ in the body and makes breathing difficult. At age three and a half, Arjun looks completely normal, but on his belly are scars from being in the operating room nine times, which can be a reminder of our family's daily fight to extend his life. Thanks to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, we know we are not in this fight alone. When the foundation was founded in 1955, children with CF rarely lived long enough to attend kindergarten. Today, thanks to the foundation's groundbreaking research, advocacy, and care, some people with CF are attending college, getting married, and starting families. But there is still much work to be done until CF stands for Cure Found. For all people with CF, including those like my son Arjun, we will not stop. Help us add tomorrow's. Visit cff.org today. You could win a trip to Universal Orlando Resort's three amazing theme parks, where you could experience Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, the epic new addition to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Plus, stay on site at Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort. Just go to sny.tv slash Toyota and enter today. Toyota, let's go places. All things New York sports, all on one site, with easy access to up-to-the-minute news on all of your favorite New York area teams, only on SNY.TV. Some football news. Josh McCown made it official Monday, formally announcing his retirement from the NFL. McCown, of course, instrumental, bringing along Sam Darnold for the Jets last year. He played for 10 NFL teams in 17 years and will now go to work for ESPN. And in NBA news, the longest tenure net could be on a new team this summer. Ford Rondé Hollis Jefferson saw Brooklyn decline a $3.94 million qualifying offer to him Monday. So now he'll become an unrestricted free agent. That being said, Brooklyn can resign him if they want. And once the Lakers made that major deal for AD, to no surprise, they are the favorites to win the 2020 NBA title. Three to one odds for Showtime, followed by Milwaukee and the Clippers as far as the New York teams. Brooklyn, 25 to one, while the Knicks, big chunk lower at 50 to one. What a surprise, Jonas. Yeah, saying there's a chance, but not a just, very good one. Just a little bit. Very little chance. All right, talking about championships, the Mets will be honoring a great championship team later this month. Nolan Ryan has reportedly, though, informed the Mets he's not attending the ceremony, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the 69 World Series team on June 29th. No reason was given. 
And Ryan was 22 years old and won six games with 92 strikeouts in 89 and the third innings during that magical 69 season. And on that note, that'll do it for Geico Sports Night. For Jonas Schwartz, I'm Chris Williamson. Have a terrific Tuesday. Don't you love your job? We get to I talk do. About I sports. Will. We get paid to talk about sports. That makes me think of the Jim Fergosi trade. I know, right?